There we go. I'm at so I'm at my parents' house right now. This is my little hey. sister's room. <laughs> so this is my family dog. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I I've had this dog for so long. I look, you forgot the gender. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's a girl though, because her Check. nickname is Tay Tay. So that's my little sister's uh name. My little sister's nickname. How was her birthday party? Oh, it was chill. Like we just went to a little a seafood bowl. Oh, nice. So uh it was with my, my grandma, my mom, dad, little sis. So yeah, a little seafood bowl. Man, of course, like eating there, it always tastes great, right? Mm-hmm. But then after you feel all that grease and oil. Oh. Like, ah! <laughs> so oh. she's we just went to Target to walk it off. Got her a present. So nice. Yeah. What's up with you, my dog? A lot going on. A lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is it? It's not off season now, is it? Or yeah, it's off season. Okay. 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 Yeah. I guess. How does it feel now, being in like your first professional off season? Well, it's my third one. Third. 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 Technically. Mm-hmm. First one out of Tampa though. Oh, true, 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 true. I mean, it was going, it was going good. I, I bought a house out here. Oh, um, shoot! Congrats, dog. Well, yeah, I appreciate it. I bought it in Tampa, um, South Tampa, and then like. So you back home? Of- so you in Tampa? No, I'm in Miami right now. Okay, oh, that's right. Oh, yeah, dog. yeah, I do that. But I bought the house in like two weeks after it flooded with Hurricane Aline. Yeah, I got, I got like two. Is this messed? Is this messed up? The reflection. You can put it lower, I guess. Yeah, there you go. That's perfect. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean the the flooding was like two and a half feet in my house, so I was ripping out drywall, ripping out floors, and now I'm trying to figure out everything. Oh, so what about Milton? Milton didn't do anything, thank God. No. What? That's so like that's interesting. Like I had a a friend of mine out in St. Pete. Uh, yeah, Helene messed it, messed his house up pretty bad, and then Milton, I don't even know yet. Yeah. The cheese, bro. Sorry to hear that. No, it's all good. Dang. Yeah. At least you got a house, though. Shoot. Yeah. I mean, I guess it's just like, is it the process of clearing the water out? And you said, like, all the drywall and stuff. Right now, I'm in the process of, I already pretty much demolished everything. I'm in the process of just hiring people, the right people, to get everything back in there. Flooring, um, getting the drywall back in there, painting, retexturizing. Um Getting the cabinets back in there for the kitchen, and then buying new appliances. God dang, bro! I'm just, I'm just thinking because, like, I'm, I don't know if it's a racial thing or maybe it's just cultural. I'm like never scared of hurricanes, and I'm not like a Florida native. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So coming down to Florida from Maryland, hurricanes is not like a huge thing, obviously. Yeah. And so I've always been inland, like Orlando area. To where it's just like rain and stuff like that, you know. Yeah. So this one, these these last two, Helene and Milton, I actually got to see like, okay, hurricanes really can actually do some damage, you know. And like, of course, like it's always done damage, but I've never been in the areas where it's actually got hit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I've been in Miami always, and I mean, we're my house is pretty secure. Uh, we got we had shutters before, and now we have the impact windows, like the hurricane impact windows, and we're elevated, so flooding's not a problem. We're probably like eight to 10 feet above like the street level. Um, but then going back over there, I was honestly going to stay in my house for Helene. I was like, it's a hurricane. I don't care. It's just winds. We'll be fine. And then they said about the storm surge and I was like, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get out of there. Yeah. And then I like, was the same. Like I, I was actually, I was going to stay. Cause like right now I'm in the apartment. I stayed at Ashley's place. I, I was a block and a half away, but I was in the fourth floor though. Oh, you were up. You were up. Yeah. yeah. You were up. Cause I'm, uh, you know, Palmasia kind of like Soho area. Yeah. So I'm up there in the second uh, second floor. So I could have been fine, but of course I would have had a power. Yeah, just like everybody else. Yeah, dog. I came to um, Orlando again, just you know, get away from that. And then um, everything was cool out in Orlando, but just you know, uh, all the debris and stuff, hard to drive on the roads for a little while. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Came back um, maybe like four or five days after everything was over, and still without a power. So. Just kind of thugged it out for a couple of days till they came back on. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez, bro. It's hard to hear that. Yeah, it's crazy. It's all good though. Jeez. Not much you can do about it. 
It's facts. Like I know even just that, simply that, knowing that you're a person obviously who's continuously like running through trials and tribulations whatsoever. Like how how are you handling this, you know, just like faith wise? You know? Oh, I was telling my girlfriend and my mom, like, I would be freaking out if I didn't have Christ. And my brother, too. I thought I would be freaking out if I didn't have Christ in my life. Yeah. It was so much adding up. It was just so much. Like, everything was perfect. And you know those times in your life that you're like, everything is perfect. Like, I'm scared for things to start going wrong because you know it's going to happen. And honestly, I felt like everything was perfect for, like, months, like, like, years. And then it was just like everything came out at the same time. It started with the house flooding. Um, <laughs> I'm putting it down. This man is... On 10. <laughs> uh, it started with the house flooding and then it started with the insurance claims, like trying to get everything together and then getting all that, um, trying to get a job that I was applying for, then also trying to um, train at the same time while doing everything, um, like trying to cut out drywall and then going to train because that's my job job. Um, and then m balancing all that with school and getting good grades and studying for exams and um, still trying to do everything that I, that I have to do is just getting everything done. Yeah, it's my first. It's my first uh, adult trial. Mm -hmm. You get a lot, dog. That is crazy. It's adulting is it's it's tough, but like I said, man, if I didn't have God in my life, knowing that God's in control, like I would be freaking out off the walls completely. I've seen people that have gone through a quarter of what I've been going through, and they're like, oh. "Yeah." It's also just like my personality type, just mixed with my faith. It's. Mm -hmm. Just like I don't care that much. Like obviously it sucks, but what am I gonna do about it? Yeah, they you know, like all you can do honestly is pray and then yeah. figure out like what's next, you know, whatever God's trying to tell you is gonna make you stronger. Yeah, I mean, so I'm hopefully gonna have a brand new house covered by insurance. So yeah. that's like I look at it that I never really look at the negatives. Yeah, um, I like what what how does how is God moving in this? And God's moving in this is I'm gonna have a brand new AC, I'm gonna have brand new flooring brand new cabinets brand new everything mm. hopefully at least like that's what it's is i'm supposed to be getting out of the insurance yeah and it could be worse i know it's not just like saying that to say it, it definitely could yeah. be worse yeah yeah dang dude dang i was talking to um drew i actually had drew can't even remember who it was today or yesterday i've been moving fast my guy yeah i've been all over the place myself shoot i mean of course like I've, i love ut so after ut it's just been ripping and running everywhere it's kind of picking up certain gigs and saying no to life-changing stuff you know all money's not good money so it's just been pretty interesting like hearing the certain offers that i've been offered you know thousands of dollars and i'm like i just don't know like, it doesn't seem correct you know when i come if you don't mind me asking why does it seem incorrect like okay so obviously you know the sports world and with business you know certain people may not be the best people to do business deals with because they may not know either know how to handle you or they try to take advantage of you okay you know so like there's a there's a handful of people that i've met that mm, they'll say like oh well, let we have this event we'll pay you this much perfect and usually like any other event will go you just do it finish get paid that's it well, of course, there's certain people that will continue to try to string you along. Like, oh, I got that payment for you. You got another one coming up. We're just yeah. going to pay you both. The, you know, and then it just keeps going. Like, you, you know, you pick up on that stuff. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's just like when that conviction hits, you know, you feel a little sick to your stomach. Like, I don't I don't think this is the good deal. Because when it's stuff, you know, when pen hits the paper, can't take stuff back. So I'm like, nah, it's, it's not good to take certain types of money from certain types of people. No, of course, still knowing what I could do. Yeah. But who knows what else they're going to try to take from me? You know what I'm saying? So I was just like, yeah, like, nah. Yeah, I know, I know that I know my purpose with the the gifts that I have, you know, that God's given me. So I want to continue to stick to that. And I don't know. Now that I feel like I found it, you know? Yeah. So that's pretty much it. Mm. So you from Miami. I did I I think I knew that when we went to that berry trip. Yeah. I knew that then. And just like how different is Tampa from Miami? Is does Tampa seem like kind of like watered down? Because you know Miami's a lot more fast paced. It's it's a watered down Miami. It's what it is. Mm. Less traffic, uh, less Cubans, which is my people. <laughs> uh, 
Miami is just 90% Cubans. And it's, I didn't know that. A little Dominican. Nah, Cubans. I mean, so many Cubans. Uh, Miami, I mean, Tampa is just Miami with no traffic and a little bit less Cubans. They're but Cubans. You still have like, you still have a sports team. You still have like things to do, places to eat that are nice. Um, you still have the water right there, the beach. It's, mm. not, it's nearby. Um, you just, you have nightlife. Like, eh, no, it's not like Miami, but you do have a nightlife if that's what you're into. But absolutely, it's not the same. I don't know personally. I just know from watching. Like, no, it's not. It's not the same. It's it, not the same. it can't compare. I've honestly never, maybe like once or twice, like years ago, but I have not really experienced a nightlife in Miami. Mm. I guess that's a good thing, honestly. But yeah, yeah. No, it definitely is a good thing. But I don't think I would encourage it. I'm, obviously, you know where I stand with my faith. I don't think I would. Think I would tell you to go. No, I, I, <laughs> I, I have no plans of it either. <laughs> but like, it's, it's crazy to think like how much I've changed. Like. Going, I mean, that's crazy. Like, I could have been if those years that I was at UT in the beginning that I was going out and doing all the things I shouldn't be doing, if that was like here, I don't know where I would be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bro, that's actually the same because, like, I've, I saw the post when you posted just about your testimony in yeah. general, like how you started off. And correct me if I'm wrong, if it was one of the A's, like, a, you know what I'm talking about. No, it's like we were you played baseball some else before you had to come back to UT. Yeah, with the Padres. That so I, I don't know the how like the specifics of the baseball leagues. Oh yeah, no way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you were playing with them first and then you came to UT. And just you were talking about that whole testimony of like the ups and downs, you know, of like just to continue to trust God with with whatever. He's never know never know where he's gonna take you. Yeah, I'd say that's probably after what's going on right now. I think that's probably the second biggest thing that's happened to me in my life in terms of like downfalls or like low periods. But mm -hmm. I'm so grateful because I feel like obviously it could always be worse. Um, but it's like no matter how the low is, how low the low is, I feel like God's got me. So it doesn't seem like a low to me, really. It exactly. Just, it just seems like a small bump. On paper, it is. On paper, it looks like. When it. I look back at it, I'm like, damn, I'm really going through it right now, and I don't even notice it. Like I'm you still happy. I got God in my life. I got people around me that love me. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that it's all going to be fine at the end of the day. Like it, it could always be worse and it mm -hmm. could always still get worse from where I am right now. But I feel like having God in my life and that supernatural peace is just, is why I'm like, whatever it is, what it is. Completely supernatural. Like I, I know uh, that certain church song, uh, it starts off like, I still have joy and chaos. Yeah. Don't need to make no sense. Yeah. And like, like Sorry, I'll tell, I think. Uh huh. Um, just yeah, like, no, no, it's not that one. It might be Matt. It can't be Maverick City. I'm about to butcher it. Uh, it's, I think it's Brandon Lake. B probably. Uh huh. But just that, like, um, kind of actually yeah. feeling that supernatural peace and kind of understanding what it is. And obviously, under and seeing like other people may react to something that they may see you going through and be completely clueless of, like, I don't understand how he's like okay right now. Yeah. You know, like I'm I just started dealing with that since last November. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just like I, I myself was like taken back. I was like, I I have so many different moments during these weeks currently where I'm like, I wouldn't even realize how cooked I would have been. Yeah. I'm crazy, you know, like I would have been cooked. <laughs> just man. Um, but growing up, like when did you actually start playing baseball? Oh, it is Maverick City. My bad. Oh, yeah, I, I thought it was. Like, firm, I had, it's firm it. foundation. I didn't want to uh, see it. But. Yeah, I started playing baseball when I was three. Um, I was three and a half, maybe. Um, yeah, we started. My brother played from when he was like five or six. Um, and then, older, yeah, he's thirty-one. I don't know that. Yeah, he's thirty-one. Um, he's eight years older than me, so. Oh shoot! He started playing, and then I just followed right behind his steps. I started off really early. Tough, but that big brother role, kind of, I guess, like coming to handy. Is like, is he is one of your inspirations? Um, I would say he definitely inspired me, um, uh, indirectly, mm. if that makes sense. Like, he's it's he had a rough couple of years at, in high school, maybe past high school. He was just very, um, angry at the world, you could say, like, mm. he just didn't have Christ in his life. And we prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. And after years and years of prayers, like, it finally it's coming to fruition. Like he's turning, gave his life to Christ. He's baptized. He's 
um, just marry his girlfriend that he was dating um, and actually had a baby. Like he's wow. going to church. He's going to Bible study, men's groups. He's just hit a complete 180. And it's it's been, I mean, so miraculous to see. So um, during those tough years, I see how it affects himself, how he's how he carries himself, how my mom goes about everything with it, how it was affecting our family. Um, and it inspired me to not be that way. Mm-hmm. Um, but now as he's maturing as a man, becoming a real man of God, mm-hmm. um, he's inspiring me in a different way of trying to be closer to God. And he's always pushing me to get closer to God in, in every aspect of that, that I can. That's huge. So like setting, setting the example as like a big, yeah, I mean, yeah for sure. Well, now that he knows, I guess, just like the importance of um, walking with Christ, you know, Dang. Yeah, but even when he wasn't um walking with Christ, he always I I I was when I was younger. So from when I was 14, I gave my life to Christ. 15, I was bapt or 13. I bat I was baptized when I was 15 or 16. Um and he always like admired that from me and how I behaved, how I carried myself, how I went about my business. And then I shied away from that. And he never he never was like, hey, like you should go back to it because he's not doing it himself. He doesn't like being, he's very, uh, he's a very st- stand up guy. He doesn't like, he's not hypocritical. He's not going to tell you to do something. He's not doing it. But he always yeah. like kind of like, you know what I mean? Like it was like, hey, like you're not the same anymore, really. Yeah, he um, was like, always like hint at it in a sense. Like he would yeah, yeah. mention that he, I guess he saw like a slight change or something like that. Yeah, for sure. That's that's crazy. Like I'm, I'm the oldest. So I know like it, I wouldn't say pressure. Now it's a lot less pressure knowing my identity in Christ. So I kind of just like follow him and that's it. And just let everything do the rest. You know, I know the example kind of speaks for itself, but I never completely pictured that I guess the example that I set for my entire family will actually like help them in their own life. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, um, I'm in a point now. I don't want to like talk too loud. I got my family here. So my dad is not the same religion. And so a lot of people don't know that. Obviously, it um I don't know how it affects me yet because it's like kind of new, you know what I'm saying? It's somewhat new and it it doesn't really change the way that I walk, but it also makes me more alert of the things that I'm doing because I know that I know how closely people will definitely watch you when they know that you're a Christian and they can't. Yeah. You like slip or mess up, you know, they cannot wait. It's like it's just human nature. But um, I guess my perspective as like the oldest, I definitely uh I, I carry a huge like title on my back just because I know my my younger brother. I don't know, I don't know where he really is in his walk, you know, but I know he's still in a position of being really mad at the world. And I've I myself dealt with anger, you know. Um I wouldn't say like justifiable crash out, but just like I, I kind of understood why I was so mad when I was uh, younger and just like the reason why I was so mad at the world. And I was kind of more upset realizing that I couldn't tell what it was back then. And it was very relieving to kind of just like let all that go. Um, I'm almost like speaking code in a way. <laughs> There's like certain reasons why any kid would feel like like their voice just doesn't like mean anything if yeah. they have a certain type of figure that's kind of above them always belittling them and kind of continuing to give consequences for even talking back, you know, or even just saying anything. And just like I re- I didn't realize that until 23 years old, October. And I was just like that's when like the peace started to come in yeah I, was, I don't know i don't even know what i'm describing right now it's still all I new exactly you're saying i got you <laughs> it's still all new bro and i i thank god that i had my mom mm. uh, she has been strong in her faith i mean from since i was a little kid I'm saying. but she wasn't when she was my, my brother's when my brother was younger she wasn't in her faith mm. um so my brother had like kind of a resent, resentment towards her depending like from what she maybe had treated him how she had treated him uh, when he was younger and not even treated him in like not like she was abusive or anything it was just like maybe not as loving and caring as a child needs and so she made sure to not make that mistake with me mm-hmm. and she was always supportive um, she was making sure that she was i never i don't have my father in my life so she was playing both roles mm-hmm. um, and she i mean she was blessed by god she was able to balance 
both roles. She was wow. able to do no one to discipline, no one to uh, support, no one to stop. Um, she was she. I call her super mom. She does everything. I mean, anything possible. Shout out to mom for real. Yeah, the thank you for sharing that. I I don't even I don't even know. Yeah, no, but going back to the Christians are always like a uh, under a magnifying glass. Mm -hmm. This is a tough thing I've been battling because okay, I like football. I want to drink a beer when I'm watching football every once in a while. Which football, bro? The only football, the American football. The other okay. one's soccer. I just make, I just, I just make it sure. You are oh, I, you part Cuban, no? <laughs> You're Spanish. <Yeah. laughs> Cubans play baseball though. Cubans play baseball, not soccer. Okay, okay, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. But let's say I want to drink a beer, um, while watching a game. It's just I just feel like it's a vibe. Like that's just what it is. Like that's just what you're supposed to do. But I don't want to reflect as like I'm drinking, mm. like to get drunk. It's just like kind of like the aesthetic of it, if that makes sense. That I just want. Like, I just want to be chilling. Like, and. I feel like such a pressure with that because I don't do it. I, I really, I don't. Yeah. I mean, I haven't drank. I actually had a, an espresso martini because I wanted to try coffee. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I've never had the drink. I, Dude, I, I do you like coffee? I'm scared of trying it. It doesn't even look like good. I don't think it, it sounds good. It's good. Do you like coffee? Yeah, but not like that. It tastes I don't like know. coffee. Oh, I, I don't know. I don't know. So I'll, I'll taste it. Yeah, I mean that's so that's what happened to me. I tasted it and I was like, I think I wanted like to try one. I didn't really like it. Like after I was like halfway, I was like, I don't want to drink this anymore. <laughs> uh, but I think I want to be a coffee guy. Okay, but that's okay. besides the point. Anyways, <laughs> um, I realized like, so in the Bible it says you should stay away from drunkards um, and stay away from anything that's scenario. So like I feel like that speaks directly to like something like that, like football. Like let's say I'm going to a tailgate. Um, right before a game that I bought tickets for, we're eating burgers, whatever, and everybody's drinking. I want to have a beer to, um, like, just, like, for the aesthetic of it, like I said, but, like, I don't want to set the wrong impression or, like, have, like, or reflect or have, like, a different um, impression of what God's yeah. image should be. So, like, I'm having a tough time balancing it because, like, I, I, I want to be able to do it at home when nobody's around me, but, like, I don't want it to be, like, a – like I'm like two like two different lives. I don't want it to be like I'm two facing it. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I want it to be like just what it is. It is what it, I am. I am what I am. Like behind closed doors, in front of whatever it is. Like I mm -hmm. want to be the same person. So yeah, I just wanted to, like I feel like it's tough trying to balance that. Um, yeah, that's that's probably going to be the toughest thing, just because obviously you know how like drinking is perceived off rip. It's like especially in college, bro. You could you could be in your mind knowing that you're trying to have a sip. Everyone else around you is like, like chug, chug, get drunk, you know, off rip. Yeah. Bro, how is like, like I don't even like I don't even like how alcohol the, tastes. The I, taste. like, <laughs> I don't like it. So like what I enjoyed back in the day was getting drunk. Not even getting drunk, because that's like not even fun. But like just having like a like the calm buzz feeling. Mm. Like that's what I enjoyed. And it's like I don't want to flirt with a line of what is right and what is wrong. Yeah, but it's like I just try to avoid it at all costs. Like I don't really drink. If I do, it'll be a social sip, like at a gathering. But I really try not to. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I don't even know what that sensation feel like. Just because I'm, I'm also like a pretty stocky dude. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't, I don't know how much I have to even intake to kind of like get there. Well, you don't I, have to find out. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't really want to. Just don't need you know, to find I, out. Yeah. I, I gotta spend a lot of money to do that as well. Like, I, no. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> It's a tough battle. Mm. I, I, I want to be able to just like chill and relax, yeah. and, like, but I don't want to. Does does like the comments come with it? Because because I, I was gonna say when uh, I was a freshman in college, I like people still make jokes to me about me to this day because uh, when I first came to UT, I was like so anti alcohol whatsoever because I was just like I'm not drinking. Like you know, I'm from trying to stay focused. I'm locked in. I don't want to drink. I want to go out. Nothing. So of course every Thursday was like college night. It would be the thing. Was like, who's gonna get Nosh to come out to the club first? You know, no one could. Like, they were they were bribing me, begging me. Like, nothing's going to work. But eventually, when uh, senior year rolls around, I'm 22. I kind of slowly start to get into it. Like, I um, I had like Miller, Miller, not Miller, Mike's Miller. Hard Lemonade. Oh, Mike's Hard Lemonade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm a mango person. So I would get the mango. Mike's Is that like a beer. It's it's like a, or is it like a seltzer? 
I think so. I honestly don't. I'm not like I have no. I've clue. heard of it. I just don't know what it is. I'm not it. huge on alcohol like that. But it's it's like it's like a spiked lemonade. That's like the best way I could describe it. I need to pray about that, man, because I, I want to be able to just chill and vibe. But I don't want to be flirting yeah. with the line that I don't want anything to do with. Exactly. I don't want anything to do with the other side at all. I would, I would probably say just I guess off my head, probably just keep it at home. Because if you're if you're out in public, you never know what could possibly even be yeah. like the weapon that's trying to form to get you to go over that edge. You know, yeah. that, and that's, that's what I'm, I'm about to go to a tailgate in two days. So okay, okay, okay. I need to, I need to lock in and pray about that. That's that's all I could think of. Cause like, uh, what's gonna call it? Yeah, that, that's literally all I could think of. It's just I'm like never... it's like something to do too. Like it's weird. It's like you're just chilling and you don't want to just be like, just that. <laughs> like, like it's just like a. It's a social <laughs> sip. I call it a social sip, and I I love I love having them every once in like two months, three months. Cause yeah, I don't yeah. go out anymore. I don't do any of that. that after finding Ashley and like the relationship we've built, it's been like a, I mean, just a beautiful ride. Like that's awesome. We don't go out. If we go out to be, I wouldn't even say we last time we went out, it was probably, I know exactly when it was, mm. she wasn't there, but it was um, to celebrate when we won and carry. Oh yeah. She actually had to fly home and she wanted to stay to be able to come with us, but um, she already had booked a flight. Um, so she, we went out that day and I don't think I've gone out since that day. Mm and my mom was so mad at me for going out for going out oh, oh okay she said, she said you were blessed by god are you gonna go celebrate the, with the devil I'm like damn <laughs> is that how it is like am i not am i doing the wrong thing well i feel you i actually like like think about it now shout out to mom too for that that does make sense I although she does not play around she will tell you straight up that does make she's sense. the scariest five foot person ever <laughs> she's five, she's five flat and she is scary <laughs> not five one five flat no she is five flat that does make sense shout out to her moms yeah i'm trying to think that's actually deep bro that's deep i had so i have a, a buddy of mine who's actually like huge into theology and actually like just the deeper on un, deeper understanding deeper meanings of the words especially when they were in greek and hebrew like you like know because the stuff that you got a deep search that are from the bible like cliff <laughs> huh like Cliff, how you know Cliff? Oh, Cliff, Cliff, Cliff. My bad. I'm thinking of a whole different Cliff. I know, I know what Cliff you're talking about. The 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 the, the, the guy that does like the yeah. debates and stuff. Yeah. So he's he's like he's like that almost. He's cold. So he won't he won't go out and preach. But when we have conversations, you could tell he knows a lot about it. And so he was telling me like he said, think about it, bro. The things that the the enemy, you know, the devil does is usually in complete plain sight and it's always disguised in something else. He said people go to clubs and stuff like that and willingly make the transaction with money to put that stuff in their body. And of course it's just like, you know, it seems like nothing, but it, but you now you can't get upset. It's like, it's almost like, like people are willingly doing that. But I know when we say something like, why would you put that in your body? It seems like we're like hating or something, you know? But People are willingly making that transaction to put something in their body that like alters their mind, you know? And so I was like, just, just him saying that and kind of breaking it down with scripture as well. It made a lot of sense of like, there's so many things that we may take for granted that may not seem like a huge distraction. Yeah. You know? And I was just like, dang, like that does make. A Can lot you of hear her in the background? Not really. It's all right. She's screaming. She's Cuban. I can hear a little bit. Just a little. I'll text her a little bit. When you, when you first came to uh, college, though, like, what what was that experience? Like, I guess when, um, yeah, of course, you don't have to go too far into it. But I know for me, people were trying to get me to go out all the time. Oh, nah, bro. So I got released when I was 20. When I got to college, a couple months in is when I turned 21. Mm. So that wasn't good. Um, I was going out a lot. I mean, I was going out every weekend um, and for the wrong reasons. It's not like eh, it wasn't for the wrong reasons because I'm really going to be with my boys. And whatever happens after that is whatever it, it is. But like, I still would love to be able to do that with my boys. But I know what comes with it and I mm -hmm. want nothing to do with that. And mm -hmm. I tell actually like nothing good comes with that. Like, I don't want if somebody else is looking at you in the wrong way or tells you something or talks to you or says something disrespectful, like. I'm not gonna let that slide. So mm -hmm. let's just avoid it at all costs. Like, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. 
because mm-hmm. she is so anti like confrontation she so and i'm not like i i'm like if something rubs me the wrong way I'm that person, bro. it's me it's funny but i don't i don't know i don't, I don't know how you do it to me it's funny you, you would say anything to anybody yeah bro like we're, we're not going for that because it's just like i mean i guess it's because i was raised by my mom which is <laughs> she's not going for anything because she had to play both roles so being able to do that and instill that into me and my brother was i mean a gift for sure but that's besides the point like I, it's not like i'm looking for anything i'm not like yeah. but it's like i'm not letting any of that slide like that's not happening so let's just avoid it at all costs mm-hmm. i'm gonna be with my boys we could go hang out at their house or we can go to like a, a small bar like we can go to you know the blind goat the where the blind goat the, i've heard about it I just Tom henderson that's i would love if we could do that every weekend i would go out every weekend because that's like it's a bar and there's other yeah. people there, but it's like they have a room in the back that we can go to uh, whenever we want to watch the fights, games, whatever's on. And we just chill back there or they have pool tables outside. It's mm-hmm. not like it's a like, like a man cave. cave. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's not like it's like a McD- they have a cornhole. Mm-hmm. It's not like it's McDonald's that it's just loud music and everybody's screaming and people are like hammered and fighting and like that's not what it is at all. Um, and that's where all the bad stuff comes. So. I think it's a lot more of a mature crowd, and mm-hmm. um, I mean, I would do that every weekend if I could. Yeah, bro, I I completely feel that. Gen, Gen X Tavern is another one that's actually a pretty dope spot. If I just know. I love hanging out with the boys, but I don't like all the stuff that comes with it. Sometimes yeah. completely get that. Yeah, like, so um, I <laughs> completely get that, bro. Yeah, completely. I don't, I don't know if the uh, the boys can do the same though. Who knows? But it's not my problem. If they can, then I'll just find some different boys and that's it. One day, bro, is I feel like it's all gonna come back like full circle. I'm pretty sure everyone likes that community and camaraderie. Yeah, bro. I'm not gonna lie to you. I mean, the team itself from last year, like a lot of guys have been getting closer to Christ. It's awesome. And I got a text the other day. I was like, damn, that I told him that is the best text I've ever got in my life. He said, Let me just find it. I'm gonna say word for word. Bar for bar. I know Pastor Mike did a lot. Who? Pastor Mike. J. Mike. Oh, JJ? Mm-hmm. He just said, I wanted to say you're a big reason I got back into going to church, praying and following his path. Very grateful. Awesome. I said, awesome. man, that is the best text I have received in years. Awesome. <laughs> like awesome. That's, what I, that's what I want. And I always get scared. Like, am I doing enough? And then mm. you and I, as hard workers, like we're somebody, we're people that never stop working. So it's like, it's never enough, we feel like. Oh, dude, I can go on. never is enough. We're never <laughs> doing enough in our faith. We're never doing enough in our jobs. We're never doing enough in everything because that's just how we're hardwired. But I, I, just, I, you, I don't even know how you think, use that. <laughs> is it not only am I, am I doing enough or is it like, am I doing anything? It's my thing. Mm-hmm. But if I'm doing something, I'm going to keep going then. Exactly. Yeah. I'm I'm literally the same exact way. I will always be like, what what else could I be doing? Yeah. What else can I be doing? Additionally, is there something I that I'm seeing? Am I going to heaven right now? <laughs> if I die right now, am I going to heaven? That's the scariest thought ever. Hey, man. It really is. Because if, if you're scared, like, damn, God, please forgive me. Please. I'm sorry. Teetering over to the. I'm, I'm sorry. Going. Please oh. forgive me. Oh, boy. That, that is not the easiest thought. I know now I, I have, like, full confidence. And, of course, even still saying that, then I'll start wondering, like, do I really? I say that, and I, and I do have full confidence. I'm doing everything. Like, I'm really, truly trying to follow God more every day. But I say that, and then, like, I know I'm not worthy of it. Mm-hmm. So it's like, what's the, like, where's the cutoff? Yeah, I do that whole loop of, like. I know God, I know he's, he sees our intentions. Mm-hmm. So, like, in that aspect, then, like, yeah, I'm going to heaven then. But then it's, like, what I'm actually doing and how my flesh fails sometimes. And, like, mm-hmm. but then I'm, like, everybody's flesh fails. And then at that point, nobody will go to heaven. So yeah. where is the line? Like, is it intentions? And all right, I'm good then. We're going that, to heaven. That exact loop. I, I do that so much. I would literally go like, am I doing enough? But I know it's not works. So like I need to stop focusing on works and just focus on him. Seek the kingdom and his righteousness and everything else will be added unto you. Perfect. Then I just need to keep seeking the kingdom. That's what I'm doing. And I know on judgment day when they, you know, watch that let you into heaven. You hey, should. That's it's the end. soon. It should. And uh, it's all because of uh, the sacrifice and his, the blood. And, Jesus and his Christ. Christ that's back. it. That's all it is. That's the only reason that I'm even allowed to come in. That's Jesus it. Christ might be coming back. In, in our time, you mean? Yeah. 
I'm I don't even know this this might sound really controversial. I don't know if I I'm like ready to see it in the sense of that's gonna be a lot for other people. Cause I, I can't like think about it this way. Imagine if you're around, like just say the boys, and you know he's back. Now you gotta look your people in the face who didn't want to hear about him. You know what I mean? I don't want to go that through that. Me. Really? At all. Wow. If if I talk to them and they say no, I'm like, I'm gonna keep trying, but that's your fault. That's your problem, bro. Yeah, that that it's a deep and it's a deep problem. Oh uh, that that kills me. I don't know why it does. I think it's just the heart that I have, like it, it messes with me a little bit. Just a little uh, just a little bit. I think it's like I think I don't talk to enough people though. Mm. Touch with about it. Like it's just tough for me to find windows. I see what you're saying. I'm not gonna be the guy that's like do this. Like, do this. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, hey bro, like you shouldn't be doing that. Mm. I was talking to uh, Drew and, and I was asking him just like what are what are different like ways that he's found is kind of like easier from an athlete perspective because you guys are still obviously in sports. It might be easier for someone like me because I'm not always in practice, you know, where you can't really talk about that stuff just randomly. You know, I'm in different workplaces where people will just ask me questions and I'll just be open about it, you know. And yeah. but you guys are usually on the field or the game. What are like the best times that you could even try right, to? I just, I just throw random jabs. How so? Like what way? Give me give me some examples. Hey, bro, look at this girl. Nah, bro, I'm not into that. I got my girlfriend, and we're trying to follow God. Got it. Like it's jab. Quick. They say something that just it's jab. Quick and simple. And it'll be like, um, yo, let's go, let's go get hammered. Like, nah, bro, I, I don't drink. Oh, why don't you drink? I just I, in the I follow Christ, and the Bible says like I shouldn't be uh, surrounded by drunkards mm -hmm. or be a drunkard. It's like th things like that, and like uh. Nah, bro, like you should be, or like, damn, bro, like whatever this and that, like, hey, bro, just trust God. You got it, bro. Like, follow God. You got it. You'll be fine. Just little jabs like that. Yeah. And then, sometimes they ask me more, but I think my a big part of my role as a baseball player and trying to spread the word is um, how I am, how I act. So I, my main thing is trying to be overly nice to everybody mm. um, and just try to be, because I I'm a nice guy, but I play around a lot. And I, some people don't take that the right way, so I just... With everybody that I don't like, I recently have been meeting. I'm just overly nice, and I don't really open up completely to them realistically. Got you. Because my best, my close friends know that it's just jokes, and they know who I really am. But some wow. people like find, get rubbed the wrong way, so I just I see what you're saying. Like they, they may take it the wrong way because they just don't know. Yeah, and I just I just let it be, and I don't do that. Mm -hmm. I just try to set an example. Have you ever had? I guess this the fear of. FOMO in general. I know like most most people that obviously are trying to walk with Christ are watching either their groups of friends, you know, go out having yeah. fun, doing, you know, certain things, whatever it may be. And then just sometimes maybe just have that feeling of, am I missing out? Maybe should I try? You know what I'm saying? It's like, have you ever had to deal with it? I don't think I ever have, honestly. That's so interesting. Because you see, that's why people don't like me sometimes. They say I sound cocky. But I feel like a lot of times I'm like the life of the party. Though. I feel like I, I wish I had that. Party. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, so would, I wish I had that. Being like that guy that like I feel like kind of sparks a lot of like different things to happen. Like um, I could be like, hey, I'm not going out. And then everybody else would be like, all right, let's do this instead. Or like in different scenarios, it's weird. Like it's it's weird. And I never like if everybody's going out, I'll be like, all right, I'll just catch you guys tomorrow then. It's not really a big deal to me. Mm -hmm. At least now. I'm trying to pick my dog up, but he keeps laying down. <laughs> Give me one sec, bro. I'm going to let him out. My fault. With, I guess, a growing. Oh, my fault. Sorry. Are you good? You good? 
I thought you were going to be longer, so I answered the phone call. <laughs> it was dope. <laughs> I just had to open the door. Right uh, out. My, my dog's the same, bro. I've always wanted a dog since uh, I was like five, six years old. And yeah. then we got one when I first got to Florida. It was a crackhead, bro. I don't even know what like the the breed of the dog was. It's like something mini, miniature pincher, if you know what that is. Oh, my goodness. You can't even pet the dog. It's just like runs around all the time and so this one is like a it's like a half poodle half something else i don't even know but I, the dog loves me the most but he'll always run and be around me and then when he wants to go out let him out as soon as i let him out was to come back in make up your mind yeah <laughs> um you played of course you played baseball but then when did you actually start playing pitcher like when you when you started playing pitcher back, I you pitched when I was pitch. young. Like I was like ten, I pitched like I would dabble a little bit, and then I had some yeah. arm pain, so I stopped. My mom didn't let me pitch until forever, actually. Um, my senior year of high school, I asked my coach to pitch. He said, "Yeah," because I had a good arm. And then I threw a bullpen, and nothing ever came from it. Like we never were like, "All right, let's do it." Mm. And then I got to pro ball as an infielder, and then I got released. Played college ball for two years as an infielder. My third year, I told Hefe a, a or. At the end of my second year, no, before my second year, I told him I wanted to pitch. Mm -hmm. um, and he never, like, he he was like, all right, we'll try it. And then he never, like, actually took me serious. And then a scout told him, asked him who if he had anybody um, for him to look at. He was like, yeah, this guy wants to pitch. He has a good arm, this and that. Um, he had me throw across the infield. I had good numbers. He was like, you got to start throwing bullpens immediately. And then I started throwing bullpens through the, the rest of the year. It was like two months after. And then I started, kept throwing throughout the summer and then came into fall ball. And I was, I mean, pitching in games and that turned into the spring. And then spring turned into now signing with the Mets. That's crazy. How did, how did like, I guess even like mentally, bro, knowing that you had to switch mid game sometimes or just in general, like do both during the game. How, yeah. how does that like, how does that look for you just in your own POV? I, I love it. I love that. I love being the guy that they would rely on, I guess. Um, I love being like the emergency guy. I love being like the guy in the tough situation. I enjoyed it. I like that's. I always thought I was scared of pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I'd be like, "Oh, like I'm, I'm kind of nervous, or I'm not feeling it right now. Like I feel like I'm off." Um, but at the end of the day, I look at it like I I want to be the guy they call at that time. Mm -hmm. So I, I really enjoyed it. I might sound stupid, but when when did you actually know you had that dog in you, bro? When did you know? You obviously know that you have it. Oh, when did you know that you had it? I had it since I was 10, mm -hmm. uh, younger, like six, seven. And I was always cold. And then I got to like 10 and I was like playing for like the best team in the country. And then I got to 11 and everybody started growing and I was getting smaller and I was staying small. <laughs> everybody was growing, everybody was growing. And I was a super late bloomer. Um, like I didn't have puberty till like 15, 16. Like oh, I was, dude. yeah, I was yeah. a late, late bloomer. Back in the uh, pack. So I, I lost it for years, man. I lost it for years, years, years. And I got it back, I would say my senior year of high school okay. is when I got it back. Um, and I realized like I'm good and I can do this and I work hard. And like that's what it is. And then I sucked in pro ball, but I still had that like, I don't care. Like I'm still I know I'm like good. I'm gonna keep working. Mm -hmm. Um, so I would say I I've from my senior year of high school on, even though if I sucked or not, I knew I still like was a dude like i had to go get it done and that's it mm -hmm. so i know i don't me personally i know that you were obviously in fca like how did that help you being the player that you are obviously like off the field and on the field and what could you like tell other athletes that may be you know wanting to come to christ or maybe struggling with their faith to actually like get into just like the community you know like-minded community that will actually you know listen to them and just actually like help them continue to grow their own relationship yeah, I was I would say it'll be an indirect um it'll be an indirect effect towards your on field play uh, when you get closer to Christ. Cause when I got closer to Christ, it was I was trying to inspire my teammates. I'm trying to speak good onto them. I'm trying to help them um, become better people. I'm trying to help them in all aspects, like outside of baseball. And that kind of frees my mind a little bit, if that makes sense. Like it makes me feel like a, a weight off my shoulders of like doing what I'm called to do with Christ. Um so it, it makes me feel like I'm doing the right thing and it's just like I'm out there just having like fun. I'm not really thinking about my stats. I'm not thinking yeah. about anything. I'm like, I did like my duty in a sort of way, or like I not my duty, but like I did what I'm supposed to do, which is my duty. But 
it just time. feels like it just feels like you if like free you feel like you're having so much fun like playing the game and like our our community and our friend group and our team were so like tightly knit and it was because i really believe it was because of of christ like how mm -hmm. some guys would come to fca and then some more guys show up and some more guys show up and like even if they don't go to church even if they don't go to fca ever but they're in the prayer group before mm -hmm. the game it's a big deal to me and then I try to talk to him, like, hey, come to the to chapel because Pastor JJ would come on Saturdays between the double or before the doubleheader. And so being able to do that part outside of like the actual playing aspect of the game um, helped me on the field, really. Um, and even if it's like, so I had a terrible year hitting um, as a hitter, but I had a great year as a pitcher, and that's what God has for me. So like, it just helps. It helps your mindset, which in baseball, it's. They say baseball is, or what is it? It's seventy percent of baseball. Oh my goodness! Freaking, Drew just said this, and Paul yeah. said they both said the same thing. Yeah, it's mental. So when you free your mind, you become just a different animal. This is the same thing. You become bro. different. I feel like it's either God trying to tell me something in general, or that's just like a baseball rule. Say that one more time. I'll tell you the exact one because I don't want to butcher it. All right, bit, bit. It was uh, Yogi Berra. He said 90% of the game is half mental. 90% of the game is half mental. 90% of the game is half mental. You think about this like, okay, so like 45%. And then it's like, wait, no, no, no. 90% of the game is half mental. So that means pretty much the whole game is half of it is mentality. Mm -hmm. So really it's like not just physical ability. It's being able to bounce back when you suck it's being able to keep working when you suck it's being able to stay level-headed and humble when you're doing great and it's just it's the mind is a powerful thing especially in a game like baseball which is a game of failure powerful thing bro the mind is a powerful thing i like uh back in 2018 i slowly started to get into i guess like actually understanding mental health even more and um i had a senior speech and i remember one of like the oh, I saw that. Well, you saw it? You watched it? Yeah. yeah. I appreciate that. I go through your TikToks all the time. I appreciate that. Yes, sir. Bro, I'm, I'm honestly just flooding my page. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing on there. I uh, I know that all the time I go back to your page and uh, I go to Zay's Instagram and just watch your guys' videos. Bro, we, we like appreciate that more than you either know. Yeah. I know that um, like impact, impact is huge. So I know that obviously being the content creator, I want anything that I make that is looked back on to still be inspiring. Like, I don't just want to put out, you know, it's like randomness, you know? Yeah. Like, I don't really care. This is going to sound kind of wrong. I don't care about me that much. Like, I, I know that I'm just, I'm the vessel of the king, you know what I'm saying? And, like, I don't want to worry too much about me like that. I, I want to serve and be there for other people. I want to help. Well, that's what we're going to do. You know? So, like, I just, I just want to. Anything that I post, I want it to be helpful in some sort of way to somebody's life. Yeah, so, so I wouldn't say I'm selfish. Yeah, but I mean the my natural, what my natural thing is just to, like take care of myself first. Mm. So I have people in my life like there's guys like Fogel, there's guys like uh, even like Santi, there's guys like that that they just put others before themselves. Even even though you don't notice it, but you see things that they do, and it's like, damn, he went out of his way and he had something to do. And he went out of his way to come and help, and like. Seeing people like that inspires me so much. My main one, my main one was Parker. Parker was my roommate, and he helped me so much. He doesn't even know it. He probably, if he listens to this, he'll he'll find out. But <laughs> he inspired me so much to just be so kind to everybody, be so, um, like be just a servant. You're a servant to everybody, mm -hmm. and I don't mean that in a, like being a slave to them, but you're no. you're serving their needs and you're doing what Christ has called us to do. And like he has been getting a lot closer in his or stronger in his faith and yeah. see him do that and it's just like man this is a perfect correlation like this is what i want to be as a person that's big y'all were definitely close y'all were one of the probably the closest like duos on the team yeah yeah, yeah. It, it definitely showed visually and parker yeah. always that guy that's always smiling exactly <laughs> me and him are never like sad about anything we're never upset about anything like if we lost it's like damn that sucks okay whatever yeah so it was like we had the same mentality in that aspect like we didn't let nothing affect us we were always happy, mm -hmm. um, but it was just like he was so much better at 
the like hard part of Christianity, which is like crazy. He was like good at being kind to everybody. He was good at being like the polite um, servant, like going out of his way to help people. Um, and it's not even like it bothers him. He doesn't make it feel like, oh, it's like um, I have to go help this person. It's like he wants to go do it. Yeah. Uh, he was so good at that part of it that it was like I admired that and I, it inspired me for sure. Bro, that's me, bro. Like, I'm not trying to like compare anything. I, cause I'm, I only say that because I, I actually struggled with it so much when I was younger because I, I had to grasp that like not everybody is nice. And sometimes when you hurt people, they may want to set up, you know, it's like the defensive wall to where when someone may seem nice, they don't really have like the easiest time trusting them. So, like, of course, I always get confused when certain people maybe like, hurt me first or ghost me because they get scared of like, okay, like this guy's like, he's yeah. like very kind for no reason. Like, there's, you know, like there's no reason. I suck at being nice. So like, I'm just like, I, I, I suck, suck at being nice. I'm the worst. <laughs> at least you, at least you're aware of it and you know it. And I try really hard not to be, but it's just like, that's so funny to hear you say that. Oh yeah. I tell my friends all the time, like, man, I'm trying so hard and they, they, they make fun of me for it. Cause I always tell them like, I'm really trying to be a better person and I'm trying to be like, <laughs> A better Christian. I'm trying to like treat everybody nicely and like, but when you say stuff like that, it makes me. <laughs> mm -hmm. I tell like, bro, when you say stupidity like that, what are you talking about? <laughs> and like, it's mainly joking, but like, even if you say it joking, it kind of hits somebody that some people the wrong way. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I try to like be not that, but I do suck at being nice. I I, I have to go out of my way to be nice. It's not natural out of me. Mm -hmm. uh, not being nice, is, like the struggle or a struggle of of like what you're trying to learn in your walk. Yeah, because it's not being nice because I am I am nice. Like, I'm not going to be rude to anybody or anything like that. But it's like, I'm not overly nice. I'm mm -hmm. not overly kind and overly outgoing. That's my problem. I got you. I, I see what you're saying. It, 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 bro, that doesn't mean it's just a problem, you know? You may just have other people around you that are, that that's just like their personality trait where they're just super kind. Yeah, I just suck at that. Mm -hmm. I try to be that. I try really hard. Mm -hmm. Try to be a, more kinder than you already are. I try more every day more that's all that's all you can do yeah that's all you can do like i like uh i'm trying to think because i know i'm such a literal person and since i was young i played uh i played soccer I played soccer for a long time but there's this clip of me bro when i was playing peewee soccer i was about five years old and I, I don't know if it was my dad or the coach that was like all right now it was a coach this is a coach put me in the position of like right back and so peewee feels so it's hella small He's like, all right, now you stay right here. And you know, in the context, it means you just play defense. But my hands are on my knees and I, I stay, like I don't move. <laughs> so the ball, the ball and everybody else starts coming towards me, and I just don't move. And there's everyone screaming, I'm like, no, nah, get the ball. No, nah. I'm, I'm not moving, I'm doing my job. So, like, with that, with every scripture, yeah. sometimes I will look for the actual. I'll say like roots of some things in yeah. a sense of uh, like, of course, like the fruits of the spirit and like with those things, there's no law. So I know that I shouldn't feel ashamed if I am extremely kind. Cause there's no, it shouldn't be like a limit to it. You yeah. Know? And so yeah. I'll be, I'll be fine with that. And I'm, I think the, our, my problem may be take like being, being aware of when it's okay to tell someone straight up, like, yo, you're tripping a little bit. That's my thing. I tell everybody that. <laughs> you, you tell them off rip. Like, yeah, I, I don't wait to call people out. And and I, I really want people to do the same to me. And I have people in my life that do do that, even if they're not close to Christ. Like, even if just the things that I tell them, they reciprocated to me. Mm. And I appreciate that. Like, it helps me so much to grow as a person and as a man. Yeah, I need, I need more of that. I need more of the call out part. And I think, you know what it is, too? I think that comes also with athletics um, mm. with a bunch of dudes. Like, they're going to call each other out. Yeah, it's true. I could do that easily. And I, I was going to say, though, I'm from the DMV, so we have a different way of calling out, which is not Christ-like whatsoever. Well, Miami's so I'm trying worse. to find the most Christ-like way to do it. I promise Miami's worse. My how so? Are you, you probably are correct. Miami's bad. Give me, like, an example of a call. I'll give you one, too. Oh, no, nah, they'll call you out in front of everybody and, and call you things and say, like, you're being something right now. They, they, um, they, yeah, and they'll just try you. They'll, they'll like, I don't even actually like try to belittle you to like get something out of you. Um, a reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To try to like prove a point. They yeah. go to extreme. Okay, let me, let me reword all that. They try to go to extreme lengths to prove a point. Okay. 
Yeah, that, that is a lot. <laughs> in PZ County, they they just like you you you've definitely seen incidences where maybe let's say like a attractive girl comes around and maybe one of your friends just starts trying to bully you to try to impress her, stuff like that. Or like to be like, man, like they'll say something dumb like I need that loan for a thousand dollars or like something just outrageous, and then they'll start kind of like belittling you to make themselves seem a little higher, you know. You know what I mean? Yeah, like that that happens a lot. So where if you don't stand up for yourself, I don't know, you just that's just I think I think a little bit of bullying is good, yeah. A little bit slightly. I think like that type of bullying is good to help you grow as a person. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think there's definitely a limit that should never be passed ever. You should never be like physically touching anybody. Uh-uh. It should just be like words to get to like put you in line, put you in check. I sure. think that's like that's like that's what you that's you that. that bullying. That's not bullying. I think that's brotherly love. Yeah, <laughs> that Loki is y'all. You see y'all as a team, especially when I was over there. But I was telling uh, um, Drew, I was telling Drew like those trips were the most fun. It didn't matter what time we were leaving. It was just fun to like be around it. Yeah, All the boys just having fun. The hotel room, yeah, it's Those- 8 a.m. and it's like everybody's tired, but then when everybody gets together, it's just like everybody's all of a sudden awake and like mm-hmm. at it. It's awesome. It's kind of sad I'll never get to live those moments ever again, bro. That that's it, bro. I, I want you to see Drew's episode when it goes up because he was he was said something to me that I never heard from any other athlete. And I was saying that, um, he was saying that he actually looks back at a lot of those moments and is appreciative that we were even there. To be able to capture him because of course he's in them. So like he gets to relive yeah. these moments. And I was like, dang, I had literally never thought about it like that. Cause yeah. most of the time, since I'm a film person, I'm already trying to record it to tell the story without thinking how it's affecting the person in the story. Yeah. You know? right. Yeah. I mean, those videos are so powerful, man. Like the ones that you and Zay made. Like I go back all the time and just look live you back. I look back at the best times of my life. That's wild. Yeah. I would never thought I would hear, never thought I would hear that. I didn't even. I get emotional too. Like looking at the videos of us like winning and like going crazy together, I I get emotional looking at them still to this day. Well, it was only a couple months ago, but like still. Cheese, bro. Yeah. That's like, it's just knowing, like knowing what, how pro ball is and knowing how it is from here on out. It's never going to be the same. You're never going to have that bond. Yeah, it's like it's over. It's, it, it passed, and it was the best time ever. Wow. You made me sad, bro. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I get to, like, be around other teams and stuff. I Because I, I didn't I didn't get a chance to uh, play collegiate sports. I was injured uh, literally the year before. Yeah, you so, told me. Um, obviously, going into college, I, would, I didn't pick up the camera until I went to the department, bro. Isn't that crazy? So, isn't that wild? Like, I, I started off as a music producer. And then I did graphics. And then my freshman year, second semester teacher was Coach Caitlin, the women's basketball uh, assistant coach. And so she told me about the student department. So when I got over there, no one was really there. So it was kind of just like open, kind of just, you know, they needed help. So yeah. obviously learning the camera was just like, wasn't even serious at the time. It was just because like they needed help and they want more people to do it. So then after everything kind of took off, now everyone's like, oh, I want to do it. I want to do it. Yeah. You know, so it, was, it wasn't even thinking. It was just like, how is it helping the athletes? It was more like, I get to have fun with y'all. And that's just what it always felt like for me. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to think of like any more questions that I have for you. I know a lot of it. We talked a lot about faith. A lot of it. I'm glad. You're probably the first person that has continuously talked about faith besides Drew. I mean, I feel like that's what we're called to do as Christians. Thanks. And especially like, on a platform, if I ever have a platform too, I'm going to try my best to do it. Always. You look, you do though, slightly. I try to. I try to at all times. Mm. Is that something that I want to say like struggle, but maybe I don't even know the question. I guess in the long run, you would like to do something like that? With what? With your platform. Oh, that's my whole goal. Mm. My goal is to be a big leaguer glorifying God and spreading his word. And I think the day I stop spreading it or trying to spread his word, at least in the clubhouse and to the fans and like in every, every way that I can as a baseball player, I think my career will be over. I think God will take it away from me. That's awesome. the first time. 
I, see the, I wasn't spreading his word, and that's what my purpose is. Um, and I think he showed me already, like, I will take this away from you in a heartbeat if you don't do what you what I have called you to do. Yeah. What was like, I guess you don't have to go too far into it. What what was like, you said you would play for the Padres. And I got and released. Then, um, like, well, I guess what did it look POV wise that let you know, like, I should should have been doing this a different way? I didn't, I, I didn't realize it until like I started getting back into the church in 2020. Two in the fall of twenty, no, spring of twenty twenty three, is when I really started getting closer to God again. I'm um, going to church again and um, reading my Bible and doing all these things. And that was when I realized, like, this is what I'm called to do. Because it was a sermon um, about your calling and what you're supposed to be doing. And it's like you'll know when your calling is your calling. Mm -hmm. And I know this is my calling because I've been given opportunities since high school. Like I was committed to a small NAIA school. I ended up getting drafted. Like what? That doesn't happen. Mm. I get called up. I'm still not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I get released. I get to college. I start getting closer to God after my first year. First year was bad. Second year, I started getting better. Um, getting closer to God. And as I started getting closer to God, my performance started getting better. So then I started getting more professional looks again. And then now I'm back in it as I'm the closest I've ever been to God. Mm -hmm. And now I keep getting closer. And it's just like, it, it's just, I feel like it's a direct correlation of like, if you keep doing what I'm telling you to do, you'll follow and go to where you are. Mm -hmm. Or to what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. For those who want to lose their life or find it, like I'm trying to I'm not gonna butcher that for those who I'm not butchering it. Come on, Wi Fi. Yep, Matthew 16, 25. That's so, what I want to do. Huh. I want to be able to, to recall a scripture. Yeah, off rip. Bro, like I that is I, a can, I can some verses. I just can't say the actual book number. I can literally tell you most I can tell you some of the verses. I, I can't. Like this is like a backflip. Being able to do a backflip is cool as hell. And then just like <laughs> knowing scripture is like <laughs> That is cool. Man, I like I I what helped me junior year. And I know I told you that when I used to walk out of my room, I would do like the armor of God. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That me and Drew were like, oh, we're doing that. I still do it. That's cold. I still do it. Like I, I have to just because of just like, especially all this, I guess I'll see even say it, like just like demonic attacks that I've been through to be oh, able to be able to be. I'm I'm butchering that to be able to be aware of the fight is not between flesh and blood, you know, and knowing that like you gotta stay prayed up and then obviously have the armor of God on, like it's just a continuous reminder. Like I want, I don't want to be attacked unknowingly, obviously. So it's like, why not just set up the boundaries pre and just continue to stay focused and locked in so that wouldn't even happen, you know, just like um and what was the other one? Oh, what I did junior year junior year i still have little cutouts of scriptures i went to a uh, cast and uh printed them out huh you like printed them out yes and i put them all over my my front door to my room so when i walk out i have to read a couple of them and so i would do like the top row try to memorize them and just go out throughout the day with them on my mind next day same thing second row and it's like keep going, and so then when I had some like memorized, I would take it down and replace it. And it helped me so much. So I've been doing this Bible Bible plan, reading the Bible in one year. Well, I'm glad you're done, damn wow. near. But being able to just hear all the stories for the first time, really, I've never really like dug deep into the Bible. I think it's good, and then I'm excited to finish this plan to be able to dive into another plan that. I'll be able to like learn or memorize the like like the tough like scripture like the the one that like I can use on people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, bro. And I, watch, this is gonna get so much more fun. And yeah. it sounds crazy to say, but just look at look at Cliff. He's look cold. Cliff be just firing. He be knowing. He's cold. I love that. It's crazy. He just be knowing, and that that has to be a crazy feeling too, because the the level of confidence. Dude, that's like, now I can compare that to like 
a, a, a athlete that's just like so prepared like they don't even think about their emotions like they don't think about dribbling they don't think about swinging it just happens and i feel like he just oh you said that all right i have the scripture it just back here somewhere and i could just throw it at you <laughs> flow state bro crazy continuously flow literally state. man we're, we're gonna get there i'm not even we're gonna get there it's just a matter of when yeah we're gonna get there well that's, that's honestly all i got for you brody all right well thank you my dog i appreciate it. i'm gonna definitely hit you up after this of course yeah but well, thank you dog like big big bless thank you of course. yes sir thank you. thank you for having me of course all right my brother i'll see you then